A treasure trove of very important photos were found in the northern California town of Marysville several years ago. What they showed was an incredibly painful part of American history. Japanese Americans photographed just before they were sent off to internment camps. And tonight, we are able to share their story thanks to one photographer who snapped those images 81 years ago and two local historians working to document an important moment in time. Ryan Yamamoto has their story. As you look at the faces, you begin to wonder what was on the minds of these men, women, and even children. Their story can be found in a tiny storage room in Yuba City, carefully packed away in cardboard boxes. The big reveal. Where even today, David Reed, one of these handsome young men, one of the caretakers of the photos, still wonders what the faces are trying to tell him. Yeah, you'd love to sit down and talk with these folks about their experiences. Um, many or most were American citizens, adding to the tragedy of, of what happened. But who are they? And where did they come from? Terry Bush, who is an amateur behind the lens, knows the answer to those questions. Where inside his Los Altos home, he showed me boxes of old rolls of film that date back 80 years ago. He really specialized in women and children. He really had a knack. And a card catalog identifying... It might be pronounced Goichi Katayama. Every single person. Mrs. Kawamoto, Japanese registration. Giving names to those black and white faces. I feel like I'm a keeper of longtime ancient history in some ways. The keeper of history, the keeper of his father's story, Clyde Bush, who in 1942 owned a tiny photography studio in the town of Marysville. The story was an older Japanese guy came to his studio, which was in the basement of his parents' house. Clyde snapped his photo and told him to come back in a few days. He had no idea what would happen next. My dad's mom, early in the morning, came up and knocked on his door and yelled at him, you need to get down here right now. Well, there's a line of Japanese from the back door at your studio out to the front street. Okay, he rushed down and started taking pictures. It went on for like two or three weeks. All of these Japanese were coming to his little tiny studio. He'd only started it a couple years earlier. Toward the end, he asked one of the other Japanese gentlemen, well, why is everyone coming to my studio? He said, well, no one else would either take our pictures, treat us decent, but you did all of those things. You were friendly, you were nice. He realized that, okay, may maybe I did something good by just being me. Through the lens of his camera, Clyde Bush offering a simple act of kindness at a time when local Japanese Americans would need every bit of empathy. In 1941, with the bombing of Pearl Harbor by Imperial Japan, the U.S. entered World War II. President Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066, ordering 120,000 Japanese Americans living on the West Coast into internment camps, including the families in these photos. Again, it's assumed they were for ID. Since there were so many in the same time frame, it's assumed that it was related to uh, some requirement to have uh, identification um, as part of the um, internment camp experience. Sue Sender Moyers is the unofficial historian of Yuba County. It took a while for us to stretch these out. I mean, you've seen how crinkled those are. And 14 years ago, it was Clyde Bush's wife, Myrtle, who gave her the original rolls of film. And Sue immediately realized she had stumbled onto something important. I, I worried that I would be able to do justice to it. Um, I'm just one small person that came upon this treasure trove of history, and I wanted to get it to the right place. That's when she reached out to David Reed, executive director of Yuba Sutter Arts in Marysville, where five years ago, together, 
they brought the photos to life. Seeing them all on mass like that was quite an experience. Putting 100 of them on display. We worked for weeks curating the collection, uh, getting the enlargements created, and then hanging them on the wall of our gallery in Marysville. And it's, it's just it's overwhelming. I, mean, I, still, <laughs> I still get emotional just thinking about it. And uh, seeing those faces and the uncertainty and everything else that they, uh, they must have experienced. And the photos literally grew into something much bigger. Just outside of town, Sue and David led the charge to give the people in the photos and their story a permanent home. So many things happened in this area. People driving by say, what happened here? The pictures now flank the Arboga Assembly Center Memorial Park, a former migrant camp, the site where the local Japanese Americans were rounded up and imprisoned before the government shipped them off to internment camps. They're stories. I just, I just think every person here has a story about what they went through, what they lived through, and, and I try to put myself in that, mm -hmm. in that position. What would I have done if that happened to me and my children and my home and my belongings? Discrimination is certainly still with us today on many, many levels. And maybe there's a lesson in that regard to be learned here. Lessons from people who lived in the community. Their stories captured through the kindness of a camera the faces of the past, now never to be forgotten. So our ultimate goal with this story is to connect the people in those photos with their descendants who might actually be living in the Bay Area. If you can help us do that, please let us know. We'd love to hear from you. We have posted more than 80 of the photos, the ones where we had at least a last name on our website, kpix.com.